All right, so in this lab, we had the plane that's flying around in the circle, right? And it's gone, and we have some different things we can measure angles with. And so you can always get the tools up here in the top right. And we have a protractor, which you see on the screen already. And then I can also pull up a stopwatch to actually just look and see what the time is. But we're not going to actually need to use this for this lab, but it's there. Okay. So uh, those are the things that I have to work with. And then also this thing right here that's in the middle, this is called a scale. And if you can see, it's attached to the string right there. And so this is telling me the amount of force in Newtons that this string is getting pulled on. Or in other words, it's going to tell me what the tension force is in this string. Okay. So really, I have the tension force theta, the angle right there, and time we could have to work with if we had it, right? And so the question is, in number two, the question says, what, is, like, let's find a way to solve for the mass of this airplane in all the different trials. And so we know there's forces at play here. Uh, if I wanted to do a free body diagram for this, let's make it like a thick, right? This plane right here has a force of gravity going straight down and then it has a tension force that's going up at this angle right there and we can label that force of tension and this is the force of gravity which we could also call mg right it's always like in the back of our head force of gravity we can represent as mass times the pull of gravity g okay and this angle right there is going to be the angle theta. We'll just call that theta for angle. Okay. Now, one thing that I always know is when there is a force at an angle like there is right here for this tension force, then I want to break it up into its components. So if I break that into its components, let's make sure it's not too big. I have this horizontal component right there. And we could call that force of tension in the x direction and then that also is going upwards and that would be force of tension in the y direction okay so i have those two maybe i'll just draw those in to make them a little easier to see right i have those two components my 90 degrees would be right there in between those two component forces and yeah, so when I go to set up my forces, I want to try to solve for mass. The one thing is some people are saying, okay, maybe we're going to use, because it's accelerating in the X direction towards the center of the circle. That way I know there is some type of centripetal acceleration. Maybe it's in the X direction. So we would set up Newton's second law in the X direction equals mass times acceleration in the x and in this case right we have this circular motion so i wouldn't really leave this as acceleration in the x i would change that to a little c to let me know that's the circular centripetal acceleration right and so what this means now is i'm going to net all the forces in the x direction and by the way we're just i'm going through this we're going to see why the x direction doesn't work okay but so I would have a uh, force of tension in the X direction equals mass times, and that centripetal acceleration gets turned into V squared over R. And that comes from always just knowing that uh, centripetal acceleration is always V squared over R, right? That's one of our formulas that we have. It's on the formula sheet. Uh, and it's just like part of our process that whenever we have a centripetal acceleration that is right there, we automatically switch it to V squared over R most of the time if that's what we have to work with, okay? So now I just need to go, okay, I need to break this up into, maybe that's the M that I'm trying to solve for. So we can break this up into more things that I have to measure with, right? So I'm gonna use SOHCAHTOA, and if I'm doing this green horizontal direction force, force tension in the X, that is opposite of my angle right there, so opposite of my angle tells me I'm going to use sine. So this would be force of tension times the sine of our angle is equal to mv squared over 
r. And if I just rearrange this equation right there to end up solving for mass, that would give me mass is equal to the radius times ft sine theta, all divided by the speed of the plane squared. Now you're kind of seeing where we run into an issue because if I wanted to plug in numbers for these variables and solve for the mass, I know force of tension, right? That's one of the things I can measure in this experiment. I know the angle, that's what I can measure with the protractor. What I don't know is the radius or the speed. I don't have a meter stick to use in this and I don't have some way of measuring the speed, okay? Uh, so this x direction ends up not working because we don't have enough to actually solve for that. So if the x direction isn't working, let's take a look at the y direction, okay? So I'm actually cardinal sin, I'm gonna erase this. I'm supposed to leave stuff, but hey, that's the beauty of YouTube. You can erase and see what we had earlier, right? Now I'm gonna do the y direction. And Newton's first law says, because there's no acceleration in the y, right? It's not going up or down, it's not accelerating up or down. This means that the net force in the y is going to be equal to zero, okay? So I can set it up that way. I can say the net force in the y direction here is equal to zero. So now all I need to do is net these forces in the y direction equal to each other. So I have force of tension in the y, and that's positive because it's going up, and then plus the negative force of gravity, and that equals zero. And the reason why I put that negative there is it's pointing in the downward negative direction, right? So I put that negative in front. And uh, really the only thing we have left to do here is put this each of these terms into in variables that we actually know. So Ft and the y, I can use SOHCAHTOA again, and this y component is now adjacent to my angle, so I'm gonna use cosine to solve that. So it's gonna be Ft cosine of theta. And then that's minus, and F of g, remember we can always change that to just our equation for force of gravity, mg. So I can substitute that in. And now you can see this is the mass that we're trying to solve for, and I know force of tension, or I can get it from our experiment, right? I can measure the angle, theta, from our experiment, and g on Earth is always 9.8. So I know all these different terms, and now it just becomes rearranging it. So I'm going to rearrange this and solve for mass, and that would be the tension force times cosine of our angle, theta, all divided by pull of gravity g. Now it's in terms of everything that I can solve for, right? I can get force of tension from the scale. I can get the angle from the protractor. I can, I know that g is 9.8. This is all in terms of things that I can get and I can now plug those values in for each different trial and solve for what the mass is, okay? Now one other thing to remember too is when you solve this, when you're using forces and solving for mass, mass is in kilograms and we denote that as kg so like if you get an answer that says 0 0.3 that means it's going to be 0 0.3 kilograms okay all right so that is our process you can kind of see the thought process behind it and then all you need to do is do that for each of those four trials